Redfall is finally here, and I loved it. Trapped on an island off the coast of Massachusetts, you and up to three of your friends will shoot, loot, and scoot your way across gorgeous landscapes as you fight for your lives. The vampire gods have taken over, cutting off travel in or out, and it is your job to help the people take back the town piece by piece. This is an arcane immersive sim through and through, though on both easy and normal, I'd call it by far their most accessible to the masses. Coverage around this title, especially since its delay roughly a year ago, has always trended oddly negative to me in ways that just didn't make a lot of sense. Arcane is a studio that rarely, if ever, misses. From discussions with a few of my friends in the industry, I appear to be a bit of an outlier. I've sunk over 25 hours into Redfall in the past few days, both solo and in co-op, and I have enjoyed every minute of it. There are issues, and we'll get to all of them in due course. First things first though, as always I will keep this as spoiler free as possible for the story. The game takes place in Redfall, Massachusetts, a fictitious island off the coast. You will begin by choosing between four main characters, with two to come in post-release content. These characters are Jacob Boyer, a sniper focused on marking targets and stealth movements. His backstory states that he was a special forces sniper who ended up working for Bellwether Security. More on them later. Trapped on Redfall after being assigned there for work, his ultimate is cheat mode. Essentially, as a ghostly sniper snaps from target to target in quick succession for easy kills. Up next is Layla Ellison, a college student who gained telekinetic powers after being treated at Avum Therapeutics for migraines. Layla can summon a ghostly elevator to lift herself and her comrades as well as an umbrella that soaks up bullets before unleashing a massively damaging blast. Her ultimate summons her vampire ex-boyfriend. He sacrificed himself to save her, but still retained enough of his humanity to continue fighting by her side. Next up is Devinder Crowsley, a cryptid hunter, author, and ghost chaser. Dev, as he's known, was in town to promote his latest book before getting trapped. Utilizing an arc javelin that stuns and damages enemies and a translocator teleportation device, Dev is the team's resident nerd. His ultimate sees his greatest creation, the Blacklight, which can stun humans and petrify vampires for an easy kill. Last, but certainly not least, is Remy De La Rosa. A combat engineer with a degree from MIT, Remy and her robot Bribon were helping train Redfall's Coast Guard when she was trapped. Her moves include a very powerful C4 charge, along with utilizing Bribon's alarm to confuse and entice enemies. Her ultimate is called Mobilize, and it creates a rallying point where Remy and her companions can heal over time. My co-op playthrough saw me playing as Layla, while Devinder was my choice for solo action. The game begins with your failed attempt to evacuate the island, and the scenery around this is jaw-dropping. A lot has been made of Redfall's lack of a performance mode on Xbox Series consoles, and compared to the silky smooth 60 to 100 FPS I average on PC, it is noticeable. I think the game looks fantastic, and this starting area is one of the best looking that Arcane has ever produced. Redfall is an open world looter shooter, and that may turn a lot of people off at the start, and I get it, but there are more great games than ever, and the thought of a huge, bloated map game just isn't always appealing. Thankfully, Redfall is a tight, focused experience. There is no icon bloat to be found, and I beat every side mission and the campaign in just over 16 hours solo. And there are two locations in Redfall. I spent roughly 7 hours in the first, and about 10 in the second. Both share similar setups. You'll have a variety of main missions, optional side missions, and non-optional safehouse missions. Only the host and co-op gets progression in those missions though, you do keep any experience or drops gained when playing with friends. The game scales enemy to the highest level player, which can make it impossible to play together if you're more than a few levels apart. This system is why I had a co-op and solo set of heroes, and I do hope they eventually change it up post-patch because games like Saints Row and Halo Infinite have shown that you can set up a system to allow co-op play without having to start over from scratch. Main missions lead to eventually hunting down the Vampire Gods, of which there are four. To gain access to them, you'll need the skulls of three Vampire Underbosses. To get these, you'll need to find safe houses and complete two missions in each. You'll come across various side missions in your main hub area, which is a firehouse in the first part of the island. These add flavor to the game and are the only optional part of it. There weren't that many and without realizing it, I unlocked the achievement for completing all of them when I still had four main missions left. Mission objectives, especially in the safe house ones, are built with replayability in mind. Every playthrough can have different objectives and different locations for these, while the main and side missions do seem to be set in place. As there isn't a ton of variety for the missions, the runtime felt right. 
This is not Arcane's take on Destiny, it's much more in line with a less bloated Far Cry title. The map is never full of random icons, and the only collectibles in the game are the grave locks, of which there are 100. I found a massive 20 in my playthrough, and each one gives you a snippet of audio backstory for the game's campaign. Exploring Redfall was something I was allowed to do, and not forced. There is a ton of backstory available through the various text logs that you can find, though that was a problem area in co-op. For some reason, whenever one player reads a text file, no one else can access it by pressing X on it. Instead, you have to either make sure you hold the menu button down quickly enough after it's first accessed, or later you can go into the archive part of the menu system and find it. The other main activity on the map are the vampire nests. These are procedurally generated psychic mindscapes where vampires live. They appear on the map as a blue door icon surrounded by an ever-expanding ring. Any enemies within this zone will be buffed massively, and on the higher difficulties, they were truly a nightmare to fight. Once you locate the door and head inside, you'll be met with a random assortment of in-game areas that are stitched together in various physics-bending ways. Your goal is to reach the end, fighting an army of vampires along the way, and destroying a giant heart. There are randomly chosen modifiers that will affect what you face, and once the heart is destroyed, you'll then have 30 seconds to find the right exit and make it out to gain an experience bonus. The nests were a fun diversion, but the landscape inside repeated too often. By the end, I mostly avoided them and only went inside when it was making a mission too difficult to complete. Your main hub and safe houses can be used as fast travel spots. On both Series X and PC, fast travel was typically 4 to 6 seconds which was a huge help as there are no vehicles to get around the map more quickly. There are also historic landmarks that dot the map, offering up more fast travel opportunities as you find them. A quick interaction will set off a flare and from that point you're able to travel back and forth at any point outside of combat. And that combat is heavy. Bullets feel impactful and the variety of skills and guns on hand is pretty damned good. What isn't good is how it all feels on console by default. The game's aim acceleration curve is way too high when you first load the game up. Even low is still a little higher than I'd like, but if you do set that down and slightly raise up the aim sensitivity, it becomes Arcane's best playing console title. Now that's not saying much as I have struggled mightily to get aiming right, but this is the first time where I felt like some minor post launch tweaks can make the game feel legitimately great. Though running at 30 FPS on console is another issue. It is a smooth 30, which we'll hit more on later but even a smooth 30 is nothing compared to a locked feeling 60. My wife has played with me in co-op for over 7 hours on her Series X, and after some light tweaks she's had a very few complaints. Just a couple. I started out on console to get footage for the review and get a feel for things before swapping over to PC. On mouse and keyboard the game feels incredible, which again is typical for an arcane title. They nail it there. Control wise, the left and right triggers aim and shoot respectively while your left and right bumpers control your main abilities. Once you've leveled enough to unlock your ultimate, you can press both bumpers together to use it. A is jump, X is interact and reload, while Y swaps through your main weapons, and B crouches and slides if you're running. On PC, you can use 1, 2, and 3 to swap between guns. On console, you just have to press Y repeatedly to go through them, and there is no weapon wheel. For the love of heck, Arcane, please patch in a weapon wheel where you can just hold Y for controllers ASAP, please. Left on the D-pad is used as a per player ping or mark system on the map. Holding down will use your healing item and right activates your extremely powerful flashlight. Redfall can get very dark at night or indoors, so make sure you don't forget to use your flashlight instead of up in the brightness and contrast far too much like I did on my wife's TV. Up is used for push to talk, left stick in is for running and right stick in is your melee. It's a pretty standard setup and it works well, Though on PC, it did take a little while to get used to using Z, X, and C so often for my abilities. I think the gunplay mechanics feel great overall, and my only issue really lies with the enemy AI. The fodder enemy is way too stupid to the point of just being brain dead on the easier and even normal difficulties. You can shoot people dead directly next to their comrades with no one noticing if you're far enough away far too often. It mostly crops up in the open world sections in between missions. The vampires are far more aggressive and deadly by default, and the boss fights were different enough from each other that I never grew bored of fighting, despite how stupid certain enemies were. There is a variety of human and vampire enemy types, along with different factions for each. The majority of brain dead enemies make sense lore-wise, they're just regular human cultists who devoted themselves to the four vampire gods. 
random, untrained people who have picked up arms hoping to be turned into creatures of the night as a reward. The more deadly variants are the snipers who can deal massive damage with accurate shots that do take a while to go off. There's also bellwether security agents who are far deadlier than their cultist foes, and you'll find them routinely fighting each other throughout your time in Redfall. They do suffer from the same, I see you, let me take 5 seconds to actually attack you issue far too often that the cultists do, which is a bit disappointing. Though they do dish out far more damage and I found myself dying routinely to bigger groups on the higher difficulty if I wasn't careful. For the vampire themselves, you have an assortment that gets added into slowly over time. There are a ton of rank and file vampires who love to float up in the sky and talk to themselves. A hit with a snake launcher can take most of them out with one shot unless they're buffed by a nearby vampire nest. There are also elite vampires that have various abilities like the Shroud, who can put a bubble on you as they limit the visibility around you until they're defeated. Bloodbags are another enemy type whose only goal in life is to run at you as fast as they can while cackling in creepy tones until they explode in your face, covering you in their damaging hot goo. Thankfully, the level design is great, with multiple routes into every major mission area. It's still an arcade game, just one built to be more approachable. Alongside various routes, you'll find a ton of electronic locks to rewire, and locks themselves to pick. There's gasoline to light up everywhere, along with tons of explosive and shocking environmental hazards to use against your foes. Various items dot the landscape, such as bleach, wrenches, hammers, and more. Picking any of those up immediately turns them into cash, which you can spend back at the hub to restock your ammo, buy new guns, or pick up medkits. Looting can be a little finicky on console, especially in multiplayer, as the money items are not actually per person. Picking them up routinely failed for me and my wife, though I never had the issue in solo play on PC. Gun and item crates, backpacks, etc. are per person, and as best I can tell, they cannot be traded between people. Outside of your per-character abilities, you will mainly be shooting enemies to death in Redfall. Things start out simple with pistols and shotguns. Quickly you'll find more exotic weaponry like UV beams and stake launchers, which can vary in their rarity. Using a familiar color coding system, you'll start out with grey regular items and quickly move to green uncommon, blue rare, purple epic, and yellow unique ones. For pistols, there are glocks, revolvers, and desert eagles. Shotguns come in pump action, double barrel, and drum barrel varieties. Assault rifles have a handful of types which can be automatic or burst fire. Burst fire routinely didn't work for me, by the way, as if you didn't hold down the button the whole time, especially on the mouse, it just gave off one little weak shot and not the full burst. There are sniper rifles, flare guns which set enemies aflame, and the aforementioned UV beams and stake launchers. My favorite weapons were of course the unique ones, which looked like they were pulled straight out of something like Destiny or The Division at times. Every gun does have random perks and rolls on its stats except for the unique items. These are only changed by the level at which you acquire them and are static otherwise. There are 40 levels in total, though I beat the game and only reached level 20. Once you complete the final mission, you are instantly set to New Game Plus and cannot go back to the map to clean things up, so keep that in mind. The skill trees for each character share a similar setup. Your abilities have a section for each one, with an ultimate upgrade requiring every upgrade before it. Each character can spec to carry more ammo for certain weapons, give more health to friends when reviving them, and gain more health back when they're low. The top of the skill tree has four unique skills per character, such as Dev gaining more money from trash items or Lena gaining more psychic residue from enemy kills, and that residue is what powers up your super ability and is represented by glowing blue orbs in the environment. Overall, I think the gear system's okay, but not great. It does its job of letting you tailor the gameplay to your preferred method well, but lacks the variety outside of unique items that I like to see. You will loot and break down these same type of guns hundreds of times throughout a playthrough with little care for making a build. I mainly just focused on how much I liked using a gun. Something like the drum barrel shotgun did massive damage, but took a full 4 seconds to reload, making it incredibly difficult to use when fighting any large crowd, so I avoided it. But I really do love this game's combat, and it is by far the most enjoyable, if potentially least immersive of any arcane offering yet, not called Youngblood. All the tools a character like Corvo would have have instead been split between four players, and in co-op they blend together beautifully. Sending my wife flying off a lighthouse with Layla's lift ability and watching her slowly glide down hundreds of feet or saving her with a quick umbrella pull as she blew a group of vampires to hell with some C4 was extremely satisfying the entire time. The biggest question about Redfall is its performance. 
On Xbox Series X, the game is set to run at 4K resolution and 30 FPS. On Series S, it appears to be running at 1440p and 30 FPS. A performance mode has been promised as a post-launch patch, though no time frame has been given. And look, 30 FPS for a shooter isn't great, especially if it's a choppy and potentially unresponsive 30. Thankfully, Redfall is a rock-solid, smooth, responsive 30. My wife was playing it the entire time on console without any major complaints. I did spend a lot of time on PC using a 5800X and 6700XT AMD rig. Utilizing a mix of high and epic settings, I averaged anywhere between 60 to 100 outdoors in the more taxing areas. Indoors, I've routinely held well over 100, even reaching my max refresh rate of 165 in story sections. And the texture quality in Redfall is excellent when it loads. This is an Unreal Engine 4 game through and through. The weaknesses we've come to expect from this industry standard are here, including an odd bug where certain environmental textures could take up to a full minute to fully load in. The floor of the fire station where the main logo is located was a common culprit of this bug, alongside various signs and billboards throughout town. When everything is loaded in, the game looks great and is Arcane's best looking title by far. It doesn't come without some all too common launch bugs though. One of the biggest being severe graphical pop-in on console and PC, kind of no matter the settings. Unreal Engine 4 is just not very good with open worlds, and the pop-in while walking around can be jarring if you're affected by it. The main gameplay affecting bug was one where sniper rifle scopes would just break, and instead of looking through the sight, you would get a broken barrel texture in front of your face instead. Non-gameplay bugs included things like co-op partners appearing as if they were falling through the ground while running and T-posing NPCs. Sick Mechanico played on PC using an ultra-wide monitor and the game was utilized well, stretching the viewable area out correctly. There is a field of view slider that defaulted to 90 on Series X with a warning that going higher, and it caps at 120, would result in a loss of performance. PC has a fair number of options including AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1, which I used to great effect, gaining roughly 20 to 30 FPS using the performance version. The worst looking part of the game overall was the occasional shimmering I would get when traversing through the open world. Foliage would get strange hazy reconstruction effects on it, which happened whether I had FSR on or not. It was maddeningly inconsistent on when it would happen and I'm not sure what the trigger was. We hadn't seen any footage of the game running on console before launch, and review code didn't arrive until 11am Thursday in the week before launch. While I hope the performance mode patch isn't too far off, if 30 FPS doesn't bother you, then the game performs well enough at launch that I think it's worth playing on console. And if you have a halfway decent PC, you should be able to tweak your settings easily enough to get a relatively high frame rate as well. Story-wise, Redfall can be a bit odd. At times, and actually most of the time, it's engrossing and heart-wrenching. Other times, a plot point hints out of nowhere, making little sense. On the whole, though, I did love it. Though, the choice of a diorama-style 3D still image cutscenes was peculiar. I mean, they're stylish, but feel like something you're more likely to see in a low-budget indie than you are a big first-party Xbox release. In each cutscene, your playable character will talk things through from their perspective, even in co-op. The people involved in the cutscene will change depending on the number of human players. NPCs will take over all three spots if you're going solo but if any of your friends are with you, both you and they will appear in your in-game clothing of choice. And there are a large number of items for each hero, cosmetically, though a lot of them are wolf suits, strangely. And the game has a ton of text logs you can read through to get context and backstory, along with a handful of audio logs. The story itself is a good mix of humor and darkness. It blends together very nicely. It had me on the verge of a sniffle or two a few times, and I found the end to be satisfying and what I was hoping for, ultimately. The voice acting was great with no weak performances in the main cast. It's helped by excellent writing that creates a setting that allows for a variety of interesting story beats. Each character felt fleshed out. They didn't exist within a box and surprised me with their takes on certain situations. The interplay between Remy and Layla in my co-op run was full of empathy and varied viewpoints that made me excited to see the game through again with a full four-player group. One thing I loved is how each character has varying levels of skill when playing instruments. Dev kills it on a grand piano when you interact with it, sounding like a pro, while Layla mashes the key like a person with no fingers. It's the little things that you'll find over time that add up to making it feel like a special type of game. 
The soundtrack is excellent with a mix of old school and new to give a unique take on the horror genre. Redfall gets spooky and the music knows when to match its energy. There are huge bombastic songs for combat and haunting melodies to play alongside the more serious story segments. Big shout out to Bethesda PR who gave us seven songs from the OST for this video review. Sound effects are sharp and both the weapon hit and headshot effects are immensely satisfying. It might be the best headshot sound effect since Halo Infinite for me. Repetition when solo was an issue though. There is a trust system that raises as you are an experience in co-op. This led to more story conversations that happen between your characters at random. When playing solo, it's not a thing. And Dev repeated the same lines time and time again to himself, which became a bit grating by the end. Bug-wise, it was mostly visual for me and not game-breaking. The few game-affecting issues I did hit were frustrating, and we have been given no word on any planned patches. The term coming in hot seems to apply here in multiple ways, though I beat the whole thing with far fewer issues than I had with another recent Unreal Engine 4 title in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Wrapping things up, Redfall is fantastic in most ways. A few baffling design decisions around its co-op implementation and some frustrating technical issues do hold it back. It is fun as hell solo, and ridiculously so in co-op. I think with a little post-launch support, it's going to become something special. This may end up being Arcane's worst reviewed title ever, but it is going to be their most successful. Because alone, or with friends, Redfall is a game that any fan of the genre should play.